Hey everybody, it's Rachel, and today I want to take a few minutes to do some book talks for you guys for books that would be excellent for your informational genre. The first is The Port Chicago 50 by Steve Scheinkin. And so you would think during wartime that the military would be glad to welcome any willing, able-bodied person into service. Uh, but during World War II, this was not the case. Um, when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, young men all over the country were racing to sign up for military service, both white and black men. And although both white and black were allowed to sign up, the duties they were given were vastly different. So African-American soldiers were not allowed on combat duty. They could only serve as laborers and were limited to low ranks. And that was based only on their skin color, nothing else. So this was how several hundred of them found themselves working at the Port Chicago Navy base in San Francisco, uh, loading bombs and ammunition onto ships. So unsurprisingly, loading bombs is a dangerous job, uh, one which the soldiers were not in any way trained for and their commanding officers were pushing them to load faster and faster and even making bets on whose unit could load the fastest. So that coupled with the lack of training, it's no surprise that an explosion occurred which killed over 300 men. And when the survivors were sent back to work doing the exact same job under the exact same conditions, they refused and were charged with mutiny. And what is the sentence for convicted mutineers? Death by firing squad. So this is a pretty fascinating look at some civil rights issues that took place during war, war, World War II, the Port Chicago 50 by Steve Schenken. Next, I have Chasing Lincoln's Killer by James Swanson. And you might think you know the story of the assassination of Abraham Lincoln by John Wilkes Booth at Ford's Theater as he watched a play. But did you know that John Wilkes Booth originally planned on capturing Lincoln and holding him hostage? Or that he was actually a semi-famous theater actor? John Wilkes Booth, not Lincoln. Or that due to the help of his friends and co-conspirators, it took a 12-day full-out manhunt to finally capture him after he assassinated Lincoln? Um, and James Swanson, the author, also got most of his materials from primary sources, so all of the dialogue that you read is reported to be what was actually said. So this story is so gripping that it, it feels like reading fiction. It doesn't feel like it could be real. Um, but we're used to thinking of Lincoln's death as being an ending, and uh, while in a sense it is, it was really the beginning of some truly unbelievable events. So, like I said, we all know the event, but we don't know the follow-up, and if you're interested in that, this is a great book for you. All right, next, for the music fans, yeah, 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 the Beatles, Beatlemania, and the music that changed the world by Bob Spitz. And even if you aren't personally a Beatles fan, you can't deny their influence on music and culture. Um, Non-fans, or possibly those who just aren't fans yet, can still appreciate the story of how four working class kids from Liverpool became the biggest influencers in the world before social media and the internet even existed. So much so that they even spawned their own worldwide phenomenon called Beatlemania. So there's lots of photos and graphics in this book that make it really interesting and visually appealing to read. Um, even if you don't know much about the Beatles, this is a great read. And if you already are a Beatles fan, well, obviously you need to read this as soon as possible. Okay, and next for Harry Potter fans. Harry Potter, A Journey Through a History of Magic by the British Library. And I know I have many, many Harry Potter fans uh, in our fourth grade right now, so I wanted to include this one. So when the British Library unveiled a new exhibition called Harry Potter, A History of Magic in the UK, American Potterheads were pretty disappointed. We all would love to see the exhibition, but you know, we can't all just jet off to London, right? But never fear, because the British Library actually created a book that takes those of us who can't see the exhibition in person through the entire thing. And that book is Harry Potter, Journey Through History of Magic. So it's full of Harry Potter trivia, but the exhibition also looks at magic kind of as a whole through the years, uh, from the Philosopher's Stone to real-life magic wands to the oldest known Atlas of the Night Sky. 
Um, so this is a pretty quick read that I think even if you are not necessarily a Harry Potter fan, anyone with an interest in magic will enjoy because it gives you a chance to see what inspired a lot of the magic that J.K. Rowling brought to Harry Potter. All right. Last, Hitler Youth by Susan Campbell Bartoletti. This is Hitler Youth growing up in Hitler's shadow. I'm going to start with a quote. I begin with the young. So this kind of chilling quote by Adolf Hitler demonstrates one of his many plans, uh, which was to influence and brainwash children from a young age. So as that they grew, they would continue his agenda of hate. So it is for this and other reasons that the Hitler Youth was born. And the Hitler Youth was a huge organization for young people that would actually end up becoming the largest youth group in history. And this book kind of explores how he was able to influence so many young people from afar. And it includes a lot of um, photographs, things like that. And it even includes interviews with ex-Hitler Youth members. So it's, it's scary, but it's an important read, especially if you're interested in history in that time period. So that is Hitler Youth by Susan Campbell Bartoletti. I'm going to leave you there, and I will be back to talk to you guys shortly with some great um, reads for your biography genre. Thanks!